Welcome to On the Right Path with Digital Math. My name is Marley Knapp. I am a digital learning coordinator with Uwari Charter Academy in Asheboro, and I'm so glad that you have chosen to join in and watch this session on getting excited about using digital tools with math. So let's jump right in. I'll talk about a few housekeeping things just to kind of get us started. And then we'll kind of start jumping into learning about all these different strategies that we can use for digital math. So here on slide one, there is a short link, short URL to jump onto the slide presentation. So I recommend you go ahead and jump on now. It's also a QR code. At the bottom right down here in this little blue window, this will stay down here throughout the presentation. So you can jump to the slides at any time you want, but the link is on the first and the last slide as well. And slide two, three, and actually slide four have got some information for us to get started. So on slide two, I've got the my contact information and I've got a quick survey to take. Jump on and take that quick, sur quick survey. That will give me some information on what the participants use in their schools currently, like which platform do you use, which learning management system do you use, things like that. And also there's a link here to a Padlet with several columns that we will use throughout the workshop. So jump on that Padlet and introduce yourself. yourself. Tell me who you are, where you are, what you teach, which emoji are you right now? Are you nervous, curious, ready? Your mind is blown, you're amazed, or you're ready for me to bring it. And if you're willing, or if you like, you can share your pic or a bitmoji, uh, your Twitter handle, and your contact info. But that part's not required if you do not want to share contact information. Um, also, these are some of the apps and resources we will explore today. Um, Google Apps or Microsoft Office 365, most everything I'm showing you works in both platforms. So make sure you're logged into whichever one you use. We'll also explore Kami, Concept Board, Whiteboard.chat, Pear Deck, and Padlet. So you, at some point during the session, you might wanna log on or create an account. They're all free accounts. Um, if you have a mobile device that you're using today, the Google Drive, Google Slides, Google Docs, OneDrive or Microsoft Note would be apps you would probably wanna have on that device. And most of the thing we're doing today should work in Chrome, Edge, Safari, um, and have, uh, actually a variety of other browsers as well. So, and once again on this slide four, it mentions about introductions. So please jump on the Padlet and in column one is where you'll do those introductions like we saw on slide two. So we're trying to create a network of support and sharing. So we would love for you to share your contact information, though it is not required if you do not feel comfortable with that. So I'm gonna let you just kind of pause your video and take care of some of those things from slide number two, three, and four. Join the slides jump on the Padlet and the quick survey and introduce yourself and explore what apps and resources you might need to set up before we get going. So you can pause your video at any time right now and go ahead and do that and then jump back on or we'll keep on moving. So today's goals for this presentation, this is ultimately supposed to be a hands-on workshop. So I'm going to let you get hands-on even with this video. So you're gonna participate first in a walkthrough to get a glimpse of the strategies where we'll explore. <clears throat> Excuse me, the participants are going to be forming a network so that we can continue supporting each other even after the session is over. You will, participants will, participants will gain, a, gain a brief understanding of each strategy demonstrated. And participants will also become familiar with the strategy of their chosen path. So you'll be choosing a path out of the different strategies that we're exploring, the one that jumps out at you most that you want to explore further. And then participants will begin creating a lesson in an activity using the strategy from their chosen path. The digital learning standards that we are addressing in this session from the digital teaching and learning competencies for teachers and from the digital learning standards for students are listed right here on this slide. So for the teacher competencies, we're hitting something from all four areas. Um, if not one, at least two, one or two of the standards from each of those sections. The digital learning standards for students, we're hitting 
all but one of them. And there's probably many more in these sets of standards that we're still going to address, but these would be the ones that most likely we will hit. And there are links up here to both of those sets of standards in case you want to see them further. All right, so now it's time for a walkthrough. You get a chance to take, take yourself 10, 15 minutes to explore the strategy stations. Ultimately, there will be posters around the room, but I have the posters ready for you to click on. And think about, is there a strategy you have not seen before or what jumps out at you as something you really want to explore? And you're like, I love this. I want to explore this more. So there are two pages here, slide eight and slide nine. I've got the posters. So there's five different places to explore in the walkthrough. You've got student response using Pear Deck, interactive digital student notebooks, choice boards with a purpose, annotating with documents, and collaboration and discussion. So now would be a time where you would pause your computer again, pause your video again, and take a few minutes to just look through those. Everything has a QR code and a short URL so you can jump to the example activity that is being shared. So take some time. Ultimately, we had planned about 10 to 15 minutes for this part. So take a few moments to just jump in there and explore these things real quickly. You don't have to spend a lot of time, just enough time to get a little glimpse at what these things will do. These should work for most everybody in a browser. I think there's only one thing that will make you make a copy in Google um, Drive. Uh, and that is the one on digital interactive student notebooks. It should be that everything else will let you just jump right into the activity and take a look in your browser without any kind of a login. We'll worry about logins later when we start exploring those particular standards, each one in detail. So right now, go ahead and pause your video and take some time to just take a quick exploration of the different stations. And then we will move on and start really digging into the stations. Okay, so let's talk just briefly about the why. Why did I want to put together this presentation? And then I want to see you share your why. So my first thought is math is not everyone's, every student's favorite. Um, probably not most students' favorites. Um, it's just tough. It's hard. It's necessary but it's not a student's favorite. They just have a hard time visualizing or processing and understanding it. And they learn best when they are engaged in math instruction, where they have a chance to interact, to discover, respond to questions. Um, they have guided practice time where it's really guided by the teacher. Um, they can move, get up and move and do hands-on. Um, that's some of the strategies that I would like to share today. These strategies are coming from, a lot of these strategies came from some of the math teachers that work in my high school, although I have geared this presentation to all grade levels because they, they work for all grade levels. But I'll share some examples throughout the presentation of some of the things that our teachers have created, and they've had some really good success by using some of these strategies with their kids. And these engagement strategies, of course, are going to help students understand the concept a lot better. So tell me a little bit about what is your why. And now that you have gone through the path, I mean, excuse me, gone through the walkthrough, what's your path? This session is all about on the right path for digital math. So choose the path that you would like to explore further today. Which of those walkthrough strategies jumped out at you the most? Did you like the student response or the interactive digital notebooks, the choice boards? the annotating documents or the collaboration? Which one has jumped out at you the most that you would like to explore further when we stop the video and have just time to work? Um, so what is your path? So in Padlet, in the Padlet on column three, answer that question. So let's take a quick look at the Padlet. I'm gonna let this Padlet pop up into a new tab. So you've got our introduction, um, introduction column where people have already added their information. You hit the plus button, 
and add your information. This is um, column two is for questions. Anytime you have questions during the session, go ahead and put them in column two. Just add a plus. You can share your name or you can just throw the question out there. And then I'll work on adding comments because you'll be able to access this Padlet at any time. And then here's um, column three. What is your path and why? What's the reason you're interested in learning new strategies for math instruction? What path do you think? think you might choose to explore further. You may change your mind on this later, which is totally fine. You can come back to column three and say, never mind, change my mind, I'm gonna switch my path. And that is just fine also. So I'm going to start jumping in to our five different strategies and we're gonna dig in further and explore and I'm gonna demonstrate each of these strategies. All right, so let's jump into the first strategy that you explored in the walkthrough. And it's all about using student response with a resource called Pear Deck. And you may have heard of some other resources like Nearpod and some of those others like that, where you pose the questions in the middle of your slide set and the students are able to respond right there within the slides that they're watching and following along you with you while you instruct and that gives you an opportunity to save all their responses and also discuss their responses while you are giving the lesson it great it brings on a chance for real great a great discussion amongst the whole class when you're doing whole group and you can also do it with small group as well so this uses a resource called pear deck and this pear deck has a free account with some um, special features in a premium account. But what I've found is I can do most everything I need with a free account. The features from the paid are kind of cool. So I'll discuss the difference between those in case it's something you want to beg your administrators for. Um, so when you log in, you have an account that allows you to interact and attach your question sets to your slides that you make in either Google. I'm going to demonstrate in Google that it works almost exactly the same in Microsoft 365. There's um, different um, add-ons and features you can go do as well. So when you log in to your Pear Deck, you can log in with Microsoft or you can log in with Google. And I have all kinds of information to walk you through that in the slides as well. So we're gonna kind of go, we go back to the slides and we'll just talk briefly about what it does and then I'll demonstrate. So I'm gonna be demonstrating in a minute with that um, simplifying expressions um, example that we had in the walkthrough. So ultimately you use your slides or PowerPoint during instruction, students will join that slide um, lesson and follow along with the teacher and you will prompt responses on specific slides using questions or tasks that you give them. And the students re respond to the prompts directly in their slide view and those responses are saved by you. So this is the example we um, did in the walkthrough. And there's two other examples from one of our teachers on exponential functions and something from math too, as well, a short bit from math too. We had a teacher that used this a lot during remote learning and found it very um, successful and has carried it on into once the students are back in the class. So ultimately you would jump onto the Pear Deck website and create an account or log in with your account. You will also do an add-on to either your Google Slides or Microsoft 365 has an add-in in PowerPoint. You will add that on. If these are not turned on or able to be loaded, please check with your administrator and have them check with your school systems, um, Google or Microsoft 365 administrator to help make sure that these features do work. Um, so you'll open your slides or your PowerPoint with the content that you want to deliver or create one. And then you will launch the Pear Deck add-on add the questions to the slides as, as you needed, and then start your lesson for the students to join. They'll join with a code. Um, you also have an option to send a link and let them do this at a student-paced um, independent session. You can do it either way. And um, you can allow the students to respond anonymously, or you can require that they are logged in with their Google account or their Microsoft account, so you would know exactly who responded to what. So during the te lesson, you can actually view the responses and display them anonymously for discussion. They'll be anonymous when you display that. Or you can export them to a spreadsheet later. Um, export does seem like it works the best in Google Chrome browser. Um, maybe Microsoft Edge as well. So we can do a little bit of experimenting with that. 
So let's jump in to the slide set that, let me bring this up. Oops, bring this down a tiny bit. That we explored during the um, walkthrough. So there is something called add-ons. And once we get that add-on loaded, we were talking about that, we're gonna open up that add-on and it pops off to the right. So on certain slides, you have the right to, or the power to add a question. You can add the text, then just a free response text, um, multiple choice options, enter a number or launch a website. These two are part of the premium. Um, they are kind of neat. I did one example on it just so you'll see it, but they are part of a premium uh, account. So on this slide, I chose to, um, students choose an option. So I chose to make this a multiple choice question for the students. On this slide, I chose to have a drag and drop. That's the premium feature. And on this slide, I chose to have a uh, free response where students actually write the answer in. So if you did that um, activity as a walkthrough, then you saw that and you saw the different kinds of activities. So I would set all this up and then I just simply click start a lesson. And you can do the student paste or you can do instructor paste. The premium version has what's called a dashboard, it makes it a little bit more um, efficient to see the student responses, but um, it doesn't have to be used. You can still use it without that. So I'm going to go ahead and do instructor paste activity. So it'll launch your, um, your lesson in another tab and I'll go to a different browser to actually sign in like a student would. So it tells the students they need to go to joinpd.com and put in this code. So I'm going to go to another tab and go to, so this is what the students would see. I'm going to put in the code. And it gives the kids a, and this actually saves this information for you, which I kind of like. So if you see a family face, you might can get catch up with that student. So now the students are going to be in the session with you. So I'm going to hit start class. So if I change slides, it changes for the students. And as soon as I change slides again, the students have got a place to respond. This was a multiple choice question that was placed in this slide. And so I can actually go see the responses. There's nothing yet. So I'm going to let the child go ahead and put a slide. I want to say this shows number six. Then at this point, I've got show responses and I can show them in a grid so I can see if I, uh, this will be anonymous. So you'll just start seeing numbers and then you can kind of discuss with the class. Do we all agree with this number or does someone agree with this one that was different? And you can have a discussion with the kids while you're right in the middle of the lesson. So I love the way that the responses come up. They come up anonymously when you're in presentation mode. And then you can just go through each of the slides and the students can respond. By interacting and I'm going to do another slide and this one they would just type don't type it they would type a response to this particular question that you would put or task that you've sent them to and then when you're done you just end the presentation all this you name it whatever you like and you save it and you end the session And you have an option to export that to a spreadsheet before you exit out. So you can export that out to, um, uh, it's, it's like an Excel spreadsheet if you want to download it, or we'll probably open it right into your drive. If probably could open it with both OneDrive or Google Drive. So you can choose to export that, and then you've got all the responses. So that is pretty much Pear Deck in a nutshell. A great little way to interact with your kids and be able to really drive your instruction and, and morph it depending on the responses you get. Not to mention you get to keep those responses so you can look back later and um, see what kind of feedback you're getting from the students. On this slide right here, you have got several helpful videos that will walk you through how to use Pear Deck. So um, lots of great little individual, but you know, just getting set up making one from scratch, adding questions to an existing presentation. It has question, it has videos for both Google and Microsoft. So in a moment, we will move on to the next set. I'm gonna go ahead and click 
my how'd it go at the end of that session for the Pear Deck. All right, so let's look at interactive digital notebooks. This one I really, really liked. One of our teachers showed me the way she was using this and I got really excited about the power of this. If you are interested in doing any kind of digital notebook with your students, consider using this digital interactive notebook feature. This allows you to set up a teacher notebook where you are putting content in slides um, a variety of ways you can put in tasks that you want the students to complete. And then you copy all of the slides into a second notebook that is a teacher, I mean, excuse me, a student notebook, and they're linked. It tells you to link the slides. And that makes that so when you update a slide, it automatically updates for the students. And that is just, I think, is a very, very cool feature. Um, and I'll start demonstrating that real quick right here. Um, on this slide, I've got a little set, a little extra spur off slide set that walks through how to do all of this with little um, quick little GIF videos, both for Google Slides or in Office 365, you're actually going to use the Office, the Microsoft OneNote resource. And um, that will actually do almost the exact same thing. Maybe a couple of little different tweaks and you'll see the differences here in this, um, in this little spur video for that one, there's both of those little spur slide sets have walkthroughs that show you how to set things up. So the Microsoft um, one is just a teeny bit different. You'll do what's called distributing your slides to the students or pages, they call it, instead of actually changing one slide that changes in Google. Um, I do find that this um, slide changes where you the children um, will get the updates works best when they're on a laptop or a Chromebook. And usually the Chrome browser does the best um, with this Google type feature. So I'll demonstrate in Google, Google, but very similar concept of the way you can do this with OneNote in Microsoft. So I have created my teacher slides. And this is just a little sampler that you saw in the walkthrough with just a few slides that start talking about um, Black support content information and a space for them to kind of keep their own little notes right here. And then a little task for them to practice what was on this particular concept. Then later I might add some more information for the area and perimeter unit on that slide and that slide. So I put a bunch of empty slides. The only thing that it won't do is add slides and let that slide be added on the students linked set of um, notebook. Um, so you want a lot of empty extra slides that you can just add information to and it will update for the student. So then you copy, I'm going to copy just the first five slides and go to a blank student um, set of Google slides that you create. So I'm going to go here to the empty set of Google slides and I'm going to paste them. And it immediately says match the styles, keep original styles, or link and keep original styles. So I'm gonna tell it to link and keep original styles. And then I can just go up to that first one and delete it completely. We don't need that first slide. So if you notice there's a little update option, they can actually go to the original source document. So let's say they accidentally delete a slide. They can go to the source, which you can have available to be um, set as shareable and viewable, then copy a slide and paste it into their slide set if they have to accidentally delete a slide because you can't push a slide, but they can go grab it really easily. So they are already linked. So let's see if this will play nice. And if I say maybe I went to this side and I said, I don't think I want them to have this information. So I'm on the teacher slide, teacher notebook set right now. I don't think I need this information now. I'm going to delete this. And as soon as that happens, let me scoot up here to the student set. Let's, they might need to refresh the page. And they have a button that says update because that's the slide where I deleted that on the teacher slide. So if you look at the teacher slide up here, or the teacher says I deleted it. So on the student set, they now have an update button. When they hit update, 
and it'll update and that thing that I just took off is taken off on theirs as well. So as you do updates to your slides, they will see that update button. Even if they go to the first slide, they'll say, you have an update and it'll have them maybe jump even right. I think it even has them jump down to the slide where the update is. But you can also send them, if you're sending this materials and um, Canvas or Google Classroom or by email, you can remind them, you got an update on slide six, or we've added new material to go to your slide four and five, it'll have you update. So you can prompt the students to update. And you can deliver the student set of slides to them at any time. In Google Classroom, you would probably, let me slide this down a little bit. Google Classroom, you would probably want them to um, send it in Google Classroom where each student gets their own copy. And then of course you can go and look at any of their slide sets. If you send it by email, you would probably want it to set up so they make their own copy of it. And then, um, send you back a sharing link. So then you have a way to look at all of their slides they share with you. Canvas probably would be a Google Cloud assignment. Um, so that was a way to deliver to the students that they each have their own copy of the notebook, but you can still access and view their notebooks. So that is kind of digital interactive notebooks in a nutshell. So here, once again, is some information and details and notes to consider. Um, so most of the stuff I already mentioned about will be um, right here, all the little notes to consider, and that will bring you to a set of slides that will walk through speed this up a little bit, a little video on how to, and some more of those same notes to consider. And on the Office 365, same thing. You've got a little set of slides here that will walk you through little quick gifts on getting started with Microsoft class notebooks is where you set it up and then OneNote is where all the work is done and shared. And it's almost the exact same type of thing with um, Microsoft OneNote, just um, kind of looks a little bit different. So that is digital interactive or interactive digital notebooks. Just don't, uh, don't forget, anytime you have a question, you can jump to the Padlet and add your questions in slide three and I'll be going back to look at those and answer any questions you have. Also feel free to email me because I'm going to be throwing out a lot of stuff at you today. So I want you to have an option to be able to email me and contact me if you have questions. So next thing, we will jump on to the next thing in just a moment. All right, so let's jump into Choice boards, and I call this section choice boards with a purpose because it's more than just giving the kids just a set up choice. It's really digging in deeper and differentiating your choices based on the students' needs and where they are in their progress, especially if you've been monitoring progress and standards growth. So we'll jump right in and we'll look at the example. In a moment, we'll look at the example that you saw in the um, walkthrough. So this is all about differentiating your choice boards more than just giving them choice. And a lot of people have must do's and may do's as well. Things that students must do to make sure they get done and then some things they can choose from. But we're going to take the must do's and go even a little bit further and really differentiate them. So first thing of course should be to gather data on your students and determine what you'd like to do to differentiate things. And that data can come from testing, you know, standardized testing, benchmark testing, pre-tests, pre um, I ready, put a little space there. I ready data, if you have something like I ready, um, school net data, if you have something like school, any place where you get your data from. You can also survey the students. You're also probably observing them and you might even know how to group them based on observations, but a great way to get information is surveys. I'll give you an example of some surveys we have used with our fifth grade teachers um, and our fourth grade teachers to really dig in and get to know the kids on a variety of levels, that may help you with the way you might want to group up your students. It's all about grouping your students into different um, groups based on a, a need or a level they're working on, above, below, um, at grade level, different things like that. Once you've got that done, then you can start organizing chores boards and your must-dos based on that need. Um, the teachers that I work with, we like to color code things, but you might have other ways of indicating your groups. Um, and you can create your choice board in Google Docs, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, other types of media. Some people like to use websites. You can, any place that you deliver that to show the different choices. 
So when you differentiate your tasks, usually the students are completing various learning experiences, but they get to choose the order they complete them in and they can go at their own pace. Um, and they set their own goals to accomplish the tasks. Um, you can do different ways of differentiating a playlist or a pathway or a tic-tac-toe type of choice board. You could duplicate that task list and adjust the tasks or the order of the tasks based on different groups needs. Um, of course, you can really have colored color coding for these specific must do's. Um, the tasks don't all have to be digital. Um, you can mix that hands-on and digital um, information for them to do. It doesn't have to be everything on the computer. Let them have some hands-on, get on paper, do stuff. So this is math, so sometimes we need paper to do things. Um, if you have other ideas, please feel free to share them in that Padlet where you share your ideas for your pathway today. So feel free to share. Um, Data groups can be decided once again by those questions from your surveys, um, groupings from something like iReady or um, any other kind of quiz type of material you use or pretest or data or benchmarks, anything you use that you might wanna group up your children or differentiate them. Um, at the bottom down here is a couple of surveys that um, we've used with fifth grade and fourth grade, the ones we were talking about. Um, lots of ways to get to know your students. You're welcome to look at this sample and um, recreate the ideas for yourself. If you find you ever want a copy of that form, let me know, go ahead and um, contact me or put it in the questions and I will uh, submit your contact info and I'll shoot you um, a copy of it so you can get your own copy. Um, same with this one about multiple intelligence. Is your student a visual learner? Is your student a musical learner? Are they tactile? Um, this is based on the nine multiple intelligences, like interpersonal, intrapersonal. Um, you, get a, you get a lot of data on determining are they heavy in that area or weak in that area. So you might know there might be ways you need to group your kids. So those visual learners are going to lead each of those groups. Lots of different ways you can use that data. So let's explore the little sample that we did. There is a little quick, quick simple tic-tac-toe board here. And we have used this with third grade teachers on the area and perimeter unit. So if they're in a particular group, their yellow group, they must complete their row of their color. So we had a yellow group, green group, and a blue group. And they had to complete those first, and then they could pick a second row. As long as one of their rows went through this middle space, because they all needed to complete this activity, and then they can pick any others as long as they made sure they hit all five of the different types of tasks. So the tasks were scattered all around. There's like usually there was a couple of each scattered in there and they were based on kind of this is a more of a below grade level group. This is a more of an at grade and this is a more of high at grade or pushing into the next grade level. And we kind of based our data on the iReady um, diagnostic groupings because we use iReady. But there's different ways you can decide to group up your children. So they would pick and complete those tasks. They would put a little, they were just kind of, they all had access to this. Um, they were all sent their own copies. And so they could um, double click and put the date that they completed. Usually the teachers would spend about a week on this one um, and letting the kids work on those throughout the week. And they could choose their, any ones in any order they wanted. They came across a row that had two of the same kind of thing. Like say they picked the green row and then the the um, yellow row, they didn't have to do this one twice. They, but they would, and they, they might just have to trade this out for another one that um, is a type of one they like, they didn't get word problems. They had to make sure they do word problems. They could trade it out. So they had a little flexibility just to make sure that they got all of the tasks covered. So that was one way that we have been um, sharing choice boards with a purpose with our students. It's always fun to try out some fun layouts too. Don't forget the Bitmoji classroom. This does not have to just be elementary. Middle school can do it. And I tell you what, high school kids actually love it. Um, they just like that visual. I mean, a lot of kids are visual. They just like that visual way of looking at things. So right here is a template that will um, let you set it up any way you want. This is kind of templated on that area and primitive, but it doesn't have to be. You can tweak this any way you want. You're welcome to open this slide deck and make a copy of yourself, a copy for yourself. Um, Microsoft users, you can download it into a PowerPoint so you can put it up into your OneDrive and use it the exact same way. So change it up any way you need. Put your own Bitmoji, change these as you need to. We even put a third slide that had more details on the must-dos and the may-dos. So you can use this. Any, you're welcome to this slide deck for if you want to use the Bitmoji classroom, which I love them. Also, 
Don't forget about being able to monitor your kids as they do their choice board. So progress monitoring and um, standards monitoring to see if they're working on the task, they're completing the task. And in some cases, you might want to know how good did they do on the task. You also might want to do little um, pretests. There's a little picture here of a pretest that one of our third grade teachers used last year to pretest during the week. And then she would give them the exact same test either middle of the week or later in the week to see how they did. Especially if she did middle of the week, she was able to stop and see if she needed to retest, reteach, reorganize, um, either with that student or with that group of students, she could get a vibe on what was happening with the pretest and then the, taking the test again. There's also checklists. You can make a little checklist for all of your students and all the different tasks, and you might have them show you their results that they made. If, the if it tells you how many stars they got when they were completed, or if they just completed it, or it was five out of six right, or 80%, you can mark that information, keep track of that. This would probably be something the teacher would keep track of that, and she would um, use that with the students. She might want to put it in the wall and just do check marks. So you would have that on the wall if you wanted to, and just do a check mark thing for completion. You might have awards, points, prizes as the kids finish. Or you can let the kids um, assess themselves. So let them check it. Completing it, do you think they did well? What were their results? Do they need to try it again? If you tried it again, did you get better results? They got little icons they can drag up here. So you're welcome to any of these documents as well. So that is Choice Boards with a Purpose. There's um, another example for middle school here as well that you can explore. Um, uh, that has like a different layout, it has more of a, this is done in Google Slides and it takes them to a slide with details on their task and they have to do their color. Different groups are colored by these colors and then they have some may do's as well. So remember to use our document, our Padlet document, if you have any questions about the choice boards. All right, next one of our strategies, annotating over documents, which I really, really like this as well. This gives the students a lot of power, definitely keeps them engaged. This is where you will deliver a document to them in a resource that allows them to annotate over the pictures, images, documents, whatever it is you put on the space for them to collaborate and annotate, which makes it so easy for you to see what they're doing. So I'm gonna show you two different resources you can use. You can use Cami for this, or you can use something called Concept Board. Our high school math teachers are using Cami religiously. They love it. So this is a situation where you can take a image, a PDF, um, a Google Doc or a Microsoft Word Doc. This works on both your platforms as well, your Google or your Microsoft. There's a setup for each Google or Microsoft. And you can um, send these documents to the students. And when they open them up, it opens in Cami for them and they are able to annotate over. So let's look at an example of one that was delivered to students. So this is a document that was uploaded. Um, one of these online particular worksheets we chose for this, you would give this information to the students. I added a little um, little bit of information right there to use the annotation tools to shade and represent the fraction in each question below. Then go and get the sharing link and submit the link to me. So that was what I would send to the students. I would go get the share link. I would make sure the kids create their own copy. So anyone with a link creates a copy and I would just get the link or give them a QR code. And they send that link, you send that link in Google um, Classroom, in Canvas, um, directly by email, whichever you like. The students will get a link as well and send it back to you or submit it in the assignment from your learning management system. So the students would just have to go pick a color. Let's see, I wanna maybe pick a thickness. And then they would be able to do the annotation right over the document. And with a mouse, it's not gonna be perfect, but that is okay. And then when they're done with the document, they would go get a sharing link. Theirs would look a little bit different. They would just have view and edit. You would tell them to send it to you as an editor so you can give them feedback. And then when they go, you guys can go back and forth on the same document with feedback and them doing maybe corrections and you giving more feedback. So if you're an editor and they're an editor, you can go back and forth on the same document. And if they upload the link to you in a learning management system, you'll be able to access their link easily to give that feedback. 
And of course, we're going to erase. I'm going to erase my main one. So that is the Kami um, resource. Very easy to use. Concept board is another really cool tool. Let me go to board that. Here we go. This is a place where it has a huge giant canvas for you to drop things into for students to work. You can actually make sections and have your kids work collaboratively by groups. So another opportunity to differentiate. Um, you can send a board to each student and keep putting different documents based on different lessons. One of our high school EC math teachers does this a lot. He actually made a concept board, a board for each student. And then when lessons come up, he puts a new page on there, like similar to what we're looking at. And each student works on their own um, page. They don't see the other students. They're just able to work without interrupting the other students. In this case right here that we're looking at, um, I've put a page for each student in one collaborative space. So they might see each other and maybe even give feedback to each other. You'd have to come up with a way that you can monitor that and keep an eye on that. So the students, we'd be able to zoom in a little bit, pan over to theirs, maybe put their name in there and then start working on their information. So they would have to draw a line, make a slope. They can use the annotation tools that are across up here. They've got a panning, a selecting, erasing, drawing, highlighting, text, shapes. So they can put a dot and then they can draw a line through it to indicate the slope on the different activities that they're given. And so this particular example would be one of these documents would be for each student. So you put a lot up there or maybe groups and teams, one document for a team. And you would just, once again, you share it by inviting the participants by with a link or QR code. And you would set some settings for them to be able to be editors on it when they come in to invite. You do need to monitor closely to make sure that they are not messing up someone else's document. But the one good remedy is what our um, EC math teacher does is he makes a board and shares the board specifically with that student and then keeps adding documents for different lessons. And he has a whole portfolio of their work in each of the boards that he has for his students. So you would just be able to, with Cami, you would, um, you can connect your account right there in Google and Microsoft OneDrive. And when you open up a document in Google and Microsoft OneDrive, you can automatically say, open this in Cami and it will launch it into Cami. So you can make your annotations, share the link, and then um, send that to the students and they can annotate for their copy, send you a link and you can see that. So um, when you open it in Cami, it becomes a Cami document. Here is a little side spur set of slides that walks you through how to set anything up with um, Kami. Same thing with concept board. You can add, um, allows you to create spaces, import documents. You can create a variety of objects on the board and you can add comments with tasks and assign those tasks to specific students. So you can actually do a task, a comment board and put a student's email in there and it will send them that specific task. You can put those comments all over the board. And here's some, a little spur slide set to help you walk through how to use the um, concept board as well. So great little tools that help you really get the kids engaged in working with um, documents that you send them so they can really annotate over it. These will be things that are easy for them to draw and drag. Um, sometimes I find that writing equations or writing with a mouse is hard. So this is a lot of things I tend to do where there's a lot of options for dragging things, dropping things, um, moving things, making lines, making shapes, things like that would be a little bit easier for them to do with, um, they can still draw and make letters and numbers with the mouse as well, if you decide you'd wanna let them do that. And of course, if they have tablets, sky's the limit. They can go ahead and um, draw all over it and use the tablet and uh, um, have a touch screen. So there's plenty of ways to do that. Lots of stuff that we've been sharing here. The touch screen makes it really helpful to do these annotations and some of this maneuvering. So we will move on to the next resource that we are going to share. All right, so last strategy that we're exploring today, and that is collaboration and small group discussion. Um, I'm gonna start with collaborative whiteboards. If you have ever used whiteboard.fi and have not heard about whiteboard.chat yet, check out whiteboard.chat. Many, many more features that you can use. 
um, and more ways to interact with the children. Really love it. Have not even done everything that this will do. It's relatively new. It was shown to me last month and I've been exploring it, but I don't even know everything it will do. But if you have questions about it, let me know. I will dig up the answer for you and get back in touch with you. Um, so the whiteboard Dutch chat, I'll jump onto it. Then I'll come back to these slides. This allows you to set up a whiteboard space similar to that concept board or even Cami, but this way you can deliver it to students and you can see your students when you go to grid view, you can see all your students um, activities that they were working on and see them all live while they're working. So if you do this, if you do this remotely, you can go back and look at them later. If you do it live with the students, you just go to the grid view and you can see them working and moving and dragging all in one thing. You can scroll down if they have, um, if they um, you know, have more than one student, you probably have all of your students. So you'll invite them all to their own board and they see your board and then they work on their board. So you can go back to single view down here. It's coming, all right. Um, and the teacher version, the free teacher version does have an ad that pops up. Kind of pain gets in your way. It's not on the student board, it's just on the teacher board. I just kind of move it out of the way and get it out of my way when I'm not using it. Um, page version has a has more um, features, more objects, but I have found that what's offered in the free so much that I don't think I would miss the stuff in the premium <clears throat> or the page version. So in this particular activity, I asked students to already put the tools on for them. I put all the information. It's got an equation editor, so it helps you edit create equations for you. And <clears throat> I told them to use the tools below to graph the following equation. And you can use the slope intercept method or they can plot points. So as I'm looking at my students and I've invited my students, go back up here and show you how you can invite them. QR code, link, they can go to the whiteboard um, work, um, space and um, put in the code. Usually I just send a link. Um, or you can go straight to classroom and put it in an assignment um, or Teams. Um, you can also have co-teachers. So I added students and here is uh, here's Evie working on her. She's already put her two points in place. Looks like she may have used the slope intercept method and shows all of her tools that she can work on. Lots of drawing tools, lots of text options. Click and type seems to work the best. Lots of er erasing options, you can object eraser, or you can just wipe the whole page out upload stuff. You can even set settings so the kids don't have all these features. You have them, but the kids don't. A whole toolbox of widgety type things. Um, your pointer is for selecting it to do tasks or selecting it to move it, excuse me. Your move and resize will select it. And you have a lasso for lassoing around different things. And you have uh, pan option. So lots of different things. So I can actually see when I'm in my grid view that Evie was working on hers already and has kind of completed. I can send Evie feedback if I want to. I can go and open my widgets. I can do gizmos, like different stickers and emojis to pop on there for feedback. I can even have like a uh, feedback um, key for the different types of emojis I put on there. I've got calculators, clocks, dice, tables, spinners, you name it. There are stuff over here. I can even hit favorite and um, move them so that they're up more at the top so I can get to them more easily. And that's over here on the right side panel for teachers. There's so much that you can put on there for the students to work on and get back to my board. So great little way for the kids to interact. Um, this board will stay for seven days. If you don't go back in and refresh it and use it a little bit, it will expire on you. Um, you get up to 50 boards. So if you're going on to a new topic, then you can just get rid of the board and make a new board and share it with the kids. So that is whiteboard.chat, similar to whiteboard.fi, but it has so much more. I put a little list of what's different on those in our slides. And don't forget good old Padlet. Let's go, actually, let's go back here to collaborate. Here's another example of different ways that you can be using this tool. Just simple littles, just simple moving. You can make a bunch of different counters or make them copy paste those counters and move them to express, to represent expressions. 
and share there's sky's the limit on what you could send to the students for them to work on. So you would log into whiteboard.chat, start your class. Um, you can log in with Google or Microsoft, um, add your content objects, ask a question, give a task. As students work, you can click your grid view and you can showcase your students' work. You can also, one thing that's nice is you can showcase their work. I could go and go back here to the grid view. I could select Evie and showcase her. Everybody would have their her board show up for them. So you could say, hey, take a look. There's a good one that got, here's one that we just saw. Do you have, does everybody agree? And you can actually talk about this. Once again, um, teachers have used this with remote learning, but you can also do it right there in class and start that um, very powerful discussion with them. Um, here's a nice little teacher guide that walks you right through it and tons more tips and tutorials, a whole YouTube channel um, as well of different tips and tutorials on using whiteboard.chat. So great, great tool. Here's the difference in you, between the whiteboard and the Jamboard and then the whiteboard.chat. There's also Jamboard and Microsoft Whiteboard. Very, very basic tools, but sometimes they're a little easier and streamlined to use. Um, and remember, it's a big open white space where you can, um, especially like Jamboard and Microsoft Whiteboard, big open white space where everybody can be on the same board. You can give them spaces to collaborate in small groups, teams, where everybody has a space to put their own information on. Uh, Whiteboard FI is very similar to whiteboard.chat, just not as many features. It is a little easier to export student boards as PDF. You can do them all in one shot. Whiteboard.chat, I believe you have to go to each student to export theirs. Um, Whiteboard FI only keeps the whiteboards for two hours. Um, Whiteboard.chat keeps them for a week, and then you can keep refreshing them up to a certain amount of boards, and then you can change them out. So really, really like that. Um, don't forget using student discussion. Um, Use that Padlet. So along with that whole discussion concept, I like Padlet for being able to just give them a place to share their thoughts and, and write out and talk out what it was they did. So following up from that activity in the whiteboard.chat, since they can't really go and interact with each other's boards as far as I've seen so far, give them a space to jump to that tells them, share the method you chose. Did you choose the slope intercept or did you choose to plot points? Um, share the two coordinate points that you plotted. Tell me why you chose your method. And then tell them to go back and look at their classmates' post and click the heart to like somebody or more than one. Select at least one post to comment or share what you liked about their post. And one question if you have one. So then Evie went on here and said that she used the slope intercept method because it makes uh, gives me a more specific place to start. And here's the two points she plotted. So she answered all the questions. So you've got all of their responses up here so you can see them and you can see comments. Um, they would need to put their name up here on their own. So you need to prompt them to make sure they put their name if that's what you wanted. Well, you can let it be anonymous, totally your choice. This is a great chance for the kids to do um, almost kind of a discussion or nonverbal. If you're doing things in teams, then you can have the teams put together a whole post and they all discuss it before they put that post up onto the Padlet. So lots of ways to have kids to um, get kids discussing, collaborating with each other and working with each other. Um, another cool way is to use the HyperDocs. If you've ever used a HyperDoc, they're great. They come from the HyperDoc. I need to put a link here that says HyperDoc. So if you, if um, somewhere soon, if you refresh the page, it, if it's not already a link here, there will be a link here to the HyperDoc website. Lots of great templates that help you gather all your content, the place for the students to respond, um, allow them to give and get feedback, all organized into one document. It packs the whole unit into one document. Here's an example of the Law of, Am Law of Signs Ambiguous case that was created with a teacher that we worked together and to create that lesson to really give the kids a chance to discover before they worked through the problems. And so this has got everything they needed plus a place to collaborate. So there's a link to that. Um, example, if you want to um, borrow that whole lesson right there, everything's packed into it. Once again, don't forget questions on the Padlet. So now we're ready to move on to the place in the Padlet that has these five columns for you to choose your path. But right before we go there, let me um, 
mentioned, I've got a couple pages of the difference between the free and the paid of these resources. Your Google Apps and your OneDrive, if your school systems use that, which I believe most everybody does, um, you've pretty much got the use of everything. Your school system has probably bought what is needed to do what you need to on there. Cami and Concept Board, you can do most everything with the free. Cami has a few more cool features to insert images and do a signature thing and do voice and bid comments, a little bit more immersive reader type stuff. Um, but most everything I find I can do with Cami free. Same thing with Concept Board. A certain amount of storage and a certain amount of objects per board. Um, and then you kind of have to start off a different board. So it might be you do it in units. You wouldn't be putting as many objects and then you could take off those boards and do another one. Um, 50 participants per board, which should be plenty. Um, the paid has a few more features. Uh, whiteboard to chat, um, it boasts whiteboard.fi, we talked a little bit about those. And then Pear Deck, of course, does have a better dashboard, view your response access in the premium, and the draw and drag and drop response questions, and you can add audio to slides. And those can be very useful, but I've managed to find it, I can get by with most everything in the free, although I do kind of like that drag and draw, drag and drop and draw question feature, but totally, totally your choice. So now it is your turn to explore. Um, what is your path? Which of those five resources, or you might've picked more than one you wanna dig in and explore. It's time to create, time to share. So go back to the Padlet and reaffirm that you were still doing the same path. Which of the five did you choose? If you changed it, change it, just edit your uh, Padlet response. You can go to your response and click on edit and change up what you added in there. So you can edit your, your response at any time. Um, and then spend some time starting up a lesson or a unit using the strategy from your chosen path. And then of course, in our live session, we'll gather together with people that are in the path. But when you go look at that Padlet, when everybody has filled it in, you'll see who your path buddies are. And I'm, I'm hoping that everybody will share their contact info. Now you've got a network of people to bounce ideas off of. Because on this Padlet, we would like you to also share your lesson idea. Um, what kind of content, and maybe I'm going to add this right here, content and your objectives. Objectives that you met. Um, share a brief description and which resources did you use? Did you use Google Slides, OneNote, Concept Board, Whiteboard, any of the stuff that we've talked about? Which one are you using? Um, and if you're willing, please share the link to the file or the document or anything that you started. Most everything we have will have a link to share. Share the link to that um, that you started creating or share a screenshot or both because um, you can put pictures in that Padlet as well. Um, if you don't have to do that if you want, but it'd be great to go ahead and share that. And then we have a network of people that can, can work with each other. So at this point, you would hit pause on this video so you can um, take some time just to get in there and dig in and explore, put questions on the Padlet if you need to, and then pop back and we'll just do one little final um goodbye and thank you and we'll kind of wrap things up and here is the thank you um like i said feel free to contact me with any questions that you might have uh, about this um there once again is the link to the slides and a qr code and my contact information is right there and as always please contact me, Let, just shoot me an email with any questions that might pop up. If I don't know it off the top of my head, I will find it out and send it to you. I will get back in touch. And hopefully we can kind of all keep collaborating and communicating after this session is done as you start digging into these strategies and using them with the kids when you get started with school this year. And once again, you may pick more than one strategy. You are not um, tied down to just one of these strategies. If you like them all, go for it. Um, I always recommend starting with one till you get comfortable, baby steps, and then move on to the next one. So think which one do you, when you say choose your path, which one do you think you'd really want to start with first? So I hope that you enjoyed everything in the session. I hope you found at least one thing that you got excited about that you can start using and working with and um, that you will enjoy digging into some cool digital strategies to get your kiddos engaged in school this year. Thanks again, and everyone have a wonderful day.